Ashley. Our next speaker is one of the most fascinating uh, speakers I've ever heard. Uh, I had the uh, honor of uh, interviewing Ray uh, for, for my radio show a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Ray was in, exonerated from death row in Arizona. He was freed in 2002 with the help of DNA evidence. He was the 100th, at the time, he was the 100th person exonerated from death row in the United States since 1973. Anyone who hears his story, I think, has to pause and, and really consider whether the death penalty is appropriate in light of the fact that a situation like Ray's can occur. And uh, I'm, I'm very honored that he's here today. And I'm very glad you're here today, Ray, because you know it didn't have to be this way. And uh, you know, uh, with that, I give you Ray Crone. Thank you. I, I really do consider it a great honor and privilege to be here. Again, considering where I was not so long ago, it's a great honor to be here in support of this bill. And I'm a Pennsylvania native, Pennsylvania resident. I grew up just south of here in York County, a little town called Dover. I was in the Boy Scouts, the church choir. Played Little League Baseball, Little League Pee Wee Little League Football. Graduated in the top 15% of my high school. And I went in the Air Force, served six years in the U.S. Air Force. I had a top secret clearance for the job I did. When my six years were up, I was stationed in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. I liked it, I stayed there. Sunny and warm, beautiful days. Lots of nice people, lots of work, things to do. And about after about 11 years of living there, the owner of a local neighborhood bar found his night manager murdered in the men's bathroom. And the police were led to believe that I was a boyfriend, so they questioned me, and they noticed I had crooked teeth. And just two days after the murder, I'm arrested. I've never been in trouble before. Never had any runs with all. I actually believed in the death penalty. But I had nothing to worry about, because I didn't do anything. I was home in bed. I have a roommate that knew I was home in bed. Nevertheless, just six, seven months after my arrest, I couldn't afford to hire an attorney. The hundreds of thousands of dollars it takes to hire an attorney for a capital murder case, the courts granted me an attorney. $5,000 he was paid then to, to represent me in that case. And that trial lasted three and a half days. And the prosecutor used a bite mark expert, a man that was paid over $50,000 to testify against me. And I was convicted based on that bite mark. And when it came time for sentencing, I was supposed to show remorse. I was supposed to show regret, apologize. How do you show remorse for something you didn't do? I told him you had the wrong person. I didn't kill her. So I was labeled as a cold-hearted, nor remorseful murderer, a monster by the prosecutor, and I was sentenced to death. It's been three years on death row to the Arizona Supreme Court overturned my conviction because of prosecutor misconduct. And by now, my family and me both knew that this was serious, that this was not going to go away, that they didn't care if you were guilty or innocent. They just wanted somebody to pay. And so my family mortgaged their home, cashed into retirement funds, and we hired an attorney out of Southern California to represent me. And that trial lasted six and a half weeks. And we found the DNA evidence, DNA on the bite mark that I'm supposed to make did not match me. Nevertheless, the prosecutor was very persuasive, told the jury to ignore that DNA, that she was a waitress that was just transferred here by accident from somebody else's glass or bottle. And I was found guilty again. And this time the judge, after hearing six and a half weeks of testimony, ruled that there was laboring and residual doubt in my guilt. He said he wasn't sure that I'd done it. So I was sentenced to 25 to life instead. My family continued to support me and believe me. And after 10 years, three months, and eight days, we finally had DNA testing was done. And I was released, a free man at the age of 45, to start my life all over again, to reunite with my family and friends, and to thank those people that supported me here in Pennsylvania and around the country. Those people that believe that there were, we're a higher civilization that we have to kill our citizens. People that recognize we make mistakes, we're human. The measure of our worth is, is not only recognizing we make mistakes, but what we do when we make those mistakes. What actions we take to correct them. If they can do it to me, they can do it to any of us folks. To any of our families, our moms, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles. I don't think any of us would stand for that. While we all believe in, in something, we stand strong in something. We also have to unite in things we, we are against. Things we want change. You don't take your car to a garage to say what's right with my car. You take your car to a garage to fix what's wrong. I'm here to hopefully be a part of helping fix what's wrong with the death penalty in our state and in our country. And we're going to recognize that it is fruitless, mean-spirited, prejudiced, biased, and downright, darn right impractical. Because the way we handle it now, it's a luck of the draw, it's a roll of the dice, and nobody's life should be hanging in the balance on those type of terms. Thank you.